there, sing along with us. Should we say, isn't it good to see our Scoop cast members secretly filming their girlfriend <laughs> in the creepiest of creepiest ways? <laughs> We'll take it. If she's watching Scoop, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> she's still a Scoopy viewer. Our next segment must have been in theme with our special guest, Peter Coon, who, as you know, is a friend of children. Nath isn't a friend of children, but he chose this week to review Cars 2. As most people would know, going to the movies during school holidays is as fun as cancer. But last week, I went straight into the war zone to take my little cousin to see Cars 2. Now, after sitting in the cinema with 80 other children, or as I like to call them, arguments against pro-life, something struck me. And it wasn't the children. And it wasn't the smell of the children. It was the smell of the piece of shit of the movie that I was watching. Cars 2! Fail! Welcome to the inaugural running of the World Grand Prix. They're racing to save the world. No one can stop us. Here's my issue. Out of all of the amazing Pixar movies, why was it that Cars got the sequel? Cars 1 bored the hell out of me, whereas the animation's powerhouse's other installments have touched me deeply. Talking fish? Wow! Talking monsters? Wow! Talking Asian kids? Please let me in. Wow! No. Talking toys? Wow! New toys! Yeah. Talking cars? Oh, that's fucking ridiculous! Average intelligence. Cars 1 was Toad's meh. Why back it up with another installment? Hey Pixar, I can give you some ideas for sequels. How about Finding Nemo 2, where Nemo goes on a mission to find someone who actually enjoyed the first Cars movie. Or Up 2, where we see an old man hang himself from a bunch of helium balloons after watching Cars 2. How about Ratatouille 2, a chef brat takes his own throat with a knife after watching Cars 2. I'm not even going to explain the plot for you lovely people, because there isn't one. But hey, it's got some big name voices in this movie, like Larry the Cable Guy. Can't wait for some more Cars movies to come from Pixar. Cars 3, polishing a turd, is in the making. So is Cars 4, flogging a dead horse. And the final instalment, Cars 5, you're going to wish you were lying under one. I think I have my period this week. Cars 2, one star. I'm out. Thanks, Nate. There goes our free movie tickets. Yeah, angry. <laughs> Don't review a movie on your period. That's the lesson of tonight's show. Yeah. Big guest coming up. I'm very excited and it's a little bit more vibrant and energetic than your review, isn't it? Hey! Yeah. Sorry. And wholesome. I'm so excited to introduce this person. I've demanded to state that I do the introduction because yes. it's an honour for me. Get out of my shop, Brad. Oh, really? I don't want him in there. See right. you, Brad. Get out. See ya. Okay, uh, get out. It is with absolute pleasure that I introduce my favourite musician of all time, Peter Coombe. Newspaper mama. Newspaper mama, newspaper mama. Just like another egg, but when it comes to people I know, there is toffee apple all over your face. Well, here we are, and it's it's a different Scoop TV affair this afternoon. We are on a teddy bear's picnic, and I'm joined by the, probably the best guest to have on a teddy bear's picnic, Peter Coombe. I feel like we're camping inside. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not inside. We're outside. Oh, are we? Oh, yeah. right. Oh, we're outside. <laughs> do, I, do I blow our cover? So, Peter Coombe, legend in our, the legend, legend, legend in our eyes, especially particularly with myself and Nath Valvo, who is, couldn't make it today. We actually had a bit of a fist fight about this interview. And one of the because... first questions I want to ask you, he's all about newspaper. Yeah. And I'm all about orange juice. Ah, right. The song we always finish off with on the evening shows with the band is 
juicy, juicy green grass. Right. Mm. When we were listening to you and and it was actually being conditioned into our brains, your yeah. music in, in the late eighties. Yeah. What has been going on with you now? Has it been a, a big kind of repetition of just different uh, generations of kids? Or well, I suppose in a way, but but as a songwriter, I never want to feel I'm kind of resting on my laurels. Yeah, so sure. It's always been really important for me to keep writing. So it, since since Toffee Apple Newspaper Mama Chopsticks the Christmas album and all that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've, I've done another about five albums. Yeah. And so the thing I found interesting about your shows this Saturday night in Melbourne yes. at whereabouts? Uh, Thornbury Theatre. Thornbury Theatre. And I should Theater. there's a matinee also for any parents who've got who are late twenties and early thirties have got kids. Yes. Three and a four year old. Instead of um, getting the kids babysat and coming to the evening show and having a late night, yes. they can bring the kids with them. Right. Under the matinee at 11.30. Yeah, because lots of people my age would have kids now, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. I've got to catch you're... up. We didn't actually, I didn't actually realise that you were doing an adult version, so I think, I think we'll rock on. Oh, yes. Right and, and the evening show is quite loud. <laughs> That's me. That's you. Okay. Oh, wash your face in our issues. Oh, wash your face with shoes. Clean your teeth with bubblegum. Clean your teeth with Fix the fence with sticky tape. Fence with sticky tape. Brush your hair with the toothbrush. Brush your hair with the <laughs> When Mr. Figure Decay, the ladies are still decay. Oh, the kids in the street. They like to do the same. Oh, wash your face in orange juice. Oh, wash your face in orange juice. Clean your teeth with bubble gum. Clean your teeth with bubble gum. Fix the fence with sticky tape. Oh, f- the fence with sticky tape. Brush your hair with a toothbrush. Brush your hair with a toothbrush. Fry your egg in the slippery dip. Fry your egg in the slippery dip. A belly flop and a pizza. A belly flop and a pizza. That's a different version because most people say belly flop and a pizza. I'm not supposed uh, to take it away. Oh, whoops. Yuck. <laughs> Well, Mr. Figure Decay, hey. praise the city of the game. Hey. Oh, the kids in the street, they, they like, like to, to do, do the same. same. Oh, the kids in the street, they like, like to do the same. I can, I can see you're not backward and coming forward. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm not supposed to take off the phone. <laughs> I just lost it. That was that? wonderful, Stacey. Thank you so I, much for I joining can, us. I can imagine 300 TV. of you at the, the Thornbury <laughs> Theatre this Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, well, get amongst it. Thornbury Theatre, like I said, details on where to buy tickets are right here at the bottom of the screen. And, and of course, you've got to check out Peter Coombe. It's good for the soul. Come true for me. Don't care about you two. Yeah. You weren't even there. I, I was there in spirit, and that's the main thing. Thanks, fellas, for another riveting week. I know, it was good. You have lipstick on your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> <Do I? laughs> oh. <laughs> now, before we finish up this week's episode of Scoop, we have a YouTube clip of the week. We love to support all types of music and as we complete a show which celebrated Peter Coombe, loved and cherished child entertainer, we thought that this young superstar could be the next best thing. Touch my body, put me on the floor, bless me around, play with some more. Touch my body, throw me on the bed, I just want to make you feel like you never be. Touch my body, rain me in my thighs, all around your waist. Just a little case, touch my body, know you love my car, come on and give me what I deserve. Thanks for joining us tonight and next week we will continue to deliver you all the latest in entertainment news, with a twist of course. I'm Stacey June and have a bloody fabulous weekend.